Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Let me tell you a little bit about pregnancy. First of all, most people are really excited when they first get pregnant. It's like, oh, we're gonna have a baby, we're gonna have a baby. I love it when a man says, we're gonna have a baby. I'm like, you ain't having the baby. <laughs> you don't know nothing about it. We're pregnant, you're not pregnant. It's not your hormones that are gonna change. Your ankles aren't gonna swell. No little baby's gonna lock their toes around your ribs and make you feel like you're about to croak. When you're pregnant, it just seems like you are never. I mean, at first it's exciting. Oh, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And usually you're like that when nobody can tell you're pregnant. And that's kind of the way it is with our dreams and visions. We've got something inside of us. And so, you know, maybe the janitor at a company is saying, someday I'm going to own my own business. And people are looking at him and like, yeah, sure you are. Well, he's pregnant with something, a dream for his life, but he's not showing yet. And some of you are pregnant with something. You've got something birthing on the inside of you. You've got something rolling around in there. And it wouldn't do you any good to tell anybody. Just talk to God about it because they probably would discourage you and wouldn't believe it anyway. Because people look at us and go, <laughs> I mean, you should have heard the stuff that my friends said to me when I first told them that I believed that God had called me and that I was going to preach the gospel all over the world. I mean, it was just like the stupidest thing. I don't even know what gave me the boldness to say it. They laughed at me. I remember being at a bonfire one night with a lot of my church friends, roasting hot dogs and eating marshmallows, and somebody said to me, Joyce, we heard that you said <laughs> that you felt like you were going to head up one of the largest ministries that had ever been headed up by a woman. Did you say that? I said, yeah, I really believe that. And she said, we've kind of talked about it, and to be honest with your personality, we don't think that's possible. But I'm still here. And I don't know where they're at, but it ain't here. Let me tell you something. If only you and God believe in you, then you got to keep believing. I said, if only you and God believe in you, then you've got to keep believing. I don't think that people mean to be discouraging, but to be honest, sometimes they really can be. And it's just because you can't even really get mad at them because God hasn't spoken to them what He's spoken to you. He hasn't put in their heart what He's put in your heart. And they just, unless God opens their eyes, they just don't see it. Carry your baby to full term. You're not even going to look pregnant for a long time. Do we have anybody in here that's just maybe like a month or two pregnant? Anybody? I mean, anybody? Can you, can you come here real quick? Come here. Come on, real quick. This is your shining moment. You get to be a star. Matter of fact, let's just do this. How many ladies here are pregnant? Where's all the pregnant people in this church? Stand up if you're pregnant. Do I, do I have anybody? Come on, I need you. Now, do, do we have anybody here that's just gonna deliver pretty soon? Anybody that's just like nine months pregnant? 10 months pregnant? <laughs> I was pregnant 10 months. I carried all my kids 10 months. Come on, do I have anybody here that's like really like, they're pointing at somebody. Here they come. Okay, please. All right, now come here. Come here, sweetheart. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a little fun here. Just stay right there. Okay, now where, where's my lady that's about to deliver? Come here. Oh yes, you're good. I want somebody that can just barely move. 
Look at all this, aren't they great? Now you're, you're gonna see this. Okay, now here, I gotta move you and put her right in here. Put her right there. Now, ooh, Wait, you, you're yeah, you're with me. <laughs> Okay. And then you got that, now can you all turn sideways? Come on, you're just getting to show off your belly today. Turn sideways. Just turn sideways, sideways. Okay, now, this is the way it is in the spirit. You got all kinds of people pregnant with all kinds of things in your heart, but some of them, you're like, go ahead, tell me you're pregnant. You sure don't look pregnant to me. <laughs> go ahead, tell me you're pregnant. I'm pregnant. You sure don't look pregnant to me. What about you? I'm pregnant. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, but I ain't sure. What about you? Yeah, I'm pregnant. Oh. How far along? Six weeks. Ooh. <laughs> and what about you? I'm pregnant. How, how far? Six months. Six months. See? Okay, I agree. I can tell you're pregnant. <laughs> now, see, here's the thing. When, if you, when I got pregnant with that dream from God, the more I studied, the more I prepared, the more I was changing, pretty soon people began to see that maybe there really was something going on. But see, over here in this stage, nobody knows. It doesn't even really do you much good to tell them. But she's just as excited as she can be. Matter of fact, she might even be more excited than the one that's still got two months to go and, you know. <laughs> I mean, now she's excited about giving birth, but she's probably not real excited about being pregnant anymore. Because when you get to this point, you're like, I just want to have this baby. Oh my gosh. Uh, aren't you about, how far are you? About? 20 weeks. 20 weeks. Yes. So how far are you? 35. 35. How long do you get to be pregnant? I forget. 40. 40. So you only got five weeks to go. Are you ready to give birth? Ready. <laughs> ready. Ready. Okay, give them a hand. Now. All right, now listen, you're gonna get something. See, when I was just pregnant with my dream, people would look at me and say, <laughs> you, sure, you sure don't look like you could do anything for me. You know, when Abraham looked at Sarah and looked at himself, he was like, <laughs> no way. Amen? I carried all of my children right at 10 months. My doctor said, you're the only woman I know that stays pregnant as long as an elephant. <laughs> so I don't know what the deal was, but one of them was four and a half weeks overdue, one was five and a half weeks overdue, one was five weeks overdue, and one was three and a half weeks overdue. Now, it's enough when you've been pregnant nine months. But honey, when you're due, you wanna go. <laughs> and some of you are due and you're wanting to go. But there's also some of you here that are overdue and you are really, really wanting to go. I had my suitcase packed so long, I had to take everything out of it. And then twice I did this. I was so far overdue, the doctor put me in the hospital and they tried to start my labor and they had to send me back home. Now, some of you are trying to start your own labor. You're like, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go, let's do this, let's get on with it. Is, it, are, is anybody understanding me today? Yeah. I'm ready to have this baby. I don't think I can hang on too much longer. But see, that whole time of pregnancy is so important. And the time of pregnancy is where great men and women either fall by the wayside or they're made. It's in those times when you get so tired of it that you just want to pull your hair out. I, one of my last baby liked one ounce weighing 10 pounds. And he was the only one that I had natural. The rest of them, they were knocked women out back then. And, you know, Dave would sleep out in the waiting room and then say we had a baby. I was like, mm. <laughs> But by the time Danny came along, they would only let men stay in the delivery room if the woman stayed awake. They wouldn't give you anything. I don't know what that plan was all about, but that you had to stay awake so he could watch you scream, I guess. And so he weighed 10 pounds and he was so big. He was 23 and a quarter inches long, long. 
So, I mean, I was baby from back here. They thought that I might be having twins, and that was before they had ultrasound and could tell. But that he would get his feet wrapped around in my ribs, and I would just think that I was going to absolutely die. Well, you know what? Giving birth to him wasn't too much fun either. But now, 33 years later, he's the CEO of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Yeah! I'm glad I gave birth. Come on, I'm just begging you today, don't give up on your dreams. If you've got a little dream, a medium-sized dream, a big dream, get outside of your tent, take a look at God, see what great things He can do. Always believe for miracles. Don't let the naysayers put you down. Give birth. Yeah. You know, when you're going through, when, you're, when God's preparing you for something, how many of you feel like God's preparing you for something? Well, first of all, during that time, you change. When a woman's pregnant, her body is changing. And to be honest, sometimes she thinks she's crazy. And when God wants to use you, sometimes you think you're crazy. And the devil tells you you're crazy. Who do you think you are? You know, when God called me, I stopped having a desire to do a lot of the things that I used to do. And my friends thought I'd just gone off the deep end. I didn't want to go to home decorating parties anymore. I didn't want to go garage sailing anymore. I just, I wanted to study and seek God. And they thought I'd just gotten, we just think you're a little bit overboard. People don't understand you. When God's preparing you for something, sometimes your friends have to change. You know, pregnant ladies love to hang out with other pregnant ladies. And young mothers love to hang out with other young mothers who have kids. Some of you could just help yourself if you would get a few encouraging friends and get away from some of the people that are sucking all the life out of you. Amen? When you're gonna have a baby, you gotta change some habits. When you're going to have a baby, you got to change your mind about some things. Actually, if you're going to have a baby, and I'm talking natural or spiritual, you got to let go of your old life. Whatever it is that you want to do for God up here, or let's just, see, let's just say that you want to be out of debt, because I know you don't all have some kind of a vision for ministry, and that's okay. That's, that's not a problem. I use that because that's my life, but you, this can be anything. Let's just say that you're deep in debt, and today you're thinking, you feel something bubbling in there. Well, Maybe someday I could be debt free. Maybe I could actually own a car, a new car, and be able to pay cash for it. Maybe I could actually be one of the few people who ever gets to pay their house completely off and have, maybe I could come to the point where every month I had no bills to pay. Okay, now, here's the thing I want you to get. Hopefully you'll get a dream like that. So now you're pregnant. Okay, we get in debt by shovel loads. We dig our way out with a teaspoon. <laughs> You'll have to change some old habits. You can't go buy something just because it's on sale when you don't even really need it. Letting the devil tell you, well, you can't miss this. You're gonna save 50%. Well, no, you spent 50% if you bought something you didn't even need. Yeah, I don't have time to teach on debt. So. <laughs> it's a time of preparation. You know, Jesus went through times of preparation. Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 through 22. Okay. The woman of two boys came to Jesus and said, Lord... Give orders that these two sons of mine might sit one on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your kingdom. That's Matthew 20, verse 21. I want my sons to have great positions in your kingdom. And Jesus replied to her, you do not know what you're asking. So can I just throw this out? Because you've always got to teach both sides. I mean, I can stand here and preach on have a dream and get you shouting till the roof comes off this place. But I wouldn't be doing you any justice if I don't tell you what it's going to take to give birth to it. 
And that's why a lot of people don't make it through to the finish because, you know, anybody can come in and just get you excited. But if nobody tells you the practicality of how to walk it out, then you're going to get into it a month or two. And when all the excitement's gone and nobody's clapping and cheering, and it's taken a lot longer than you thought it would, it's a lot harder than you thought it would be, and it's costing you more than you ever thought you could pay, and you're so tired of it, you don't know what to do, that's when you got to decide. Amen. Not to brag on myself, but what I'm sharing with you today is extremely valuable. I feel very strong about what I'm sharing today. Because God's people should not be under something all the time. We can shout that we're the head and not the tail, but it's time that we become the head and not the tail. Amen. I shared last night about some things about the last days and, and how the world should view us and see us. You know, right in the midst of all the, the plagues in Egypt, God's children lived in a little place called Goshen, and they continued to grow and multiply, and their possessions increased. We don't have to be afraid of the economy. The economy doesn't dictate what God can do for us. <sighs> Look at the stars. Get out of your tent. <laughs> have a dream. Have a vision. Get pregnant with something. Something. And then make it all the way through the pregnancy. Don't abort. Don't try to birth early. Oh my gosh, we always want to do it ourselves, like Abraham. Well, the baby's taking too long, so I've got an idea. It was actually Sarah's idea. Women get a lot of bright ideas. You take my handmaiden, have intercourse with her, and that's how God's going to do this. You know, when God's taking too long, we always want to figure out how God's going to do it and give him an idea. Well, God, I've got an idea. Let's do it like this. <laughs> I still laugh about a time when I was so full of this vision and wanting to preach so bad I could hardly stand it. And nobody ever, I mean, you know, I never got asked to go anywhere. I mean, I was sitting in my little house with my four kids and having my little dream and just thinking if the phone would just ring and somebody just asked me to come and teach a little Bible study or... You know, just anything, I would have just thought I'd died and gone to heaven. And I just so wanted to teach and preach. And I would look at other people on television preaching and in my pride, which I'm sure God was still trying to break off of me, I would think, well, I can preach better than that. <laughs> and that's probably exactly why I wasn't getting to go anywhere. If you sit out there and listen to the worship leader and you think, oh, I can sing better than that, that's probably why you ain't up here. <laughs> and I remember typing up a letter that I was going to send out to all the pastors in my city telling them how I had been called of God and had this anointing on my life and asking them if they would like me to come to their church and preach. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I am so glad that God said, don't do that. <laughs> I would have just made a fool out of myself. You know what? I was still pregnant, but it wasn't time to give birth. When I was pregnant all that time, I mean, I started asking people when I was about in the nine and a half months, well, is there anything I can do? Take cod liver oil. I took cod liver oil. Walk. I went out and walked until my feet were sore. Still wasn't having a baby. Is anybody with me today? Sometimes when you've waited until you think you can't stand it anymore, maybe you're like, if my husband doesn't change, if these kids don't change, God, I can't stand this one more day. I'm going to go to that service today, and Joyce better have a word for me. Well, guess what? You got it. Now, very quickly, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens when you're carrying this thing from God 
that just nobody can help you with. <laughs> We're always mad at other people because they don't make us feel better. <laughs> Come on now. And to be honest, some of the stuff you're going through, there ain't nobody that can make you feel better because it's something that God is doing in you. You don't even understand it. But you got to be still and just let God do it. When Esther went into the king's harem, she went with a vision to be used to deliver God's people from impending disaster. And I don't have time to go to all these places, but there's just so many wonderful things in here. In Esther chapter 2, verse 12, now when the turn of each maiden came to go into King Ahasuerus after the regulations for the women had been carried out for 12 months. So she's been there now 12 months waiting. 12 months. She wasn't even pregnant. She was pregnant 12 months, worse than me. Since this was the regular period for their beauty treatments. Somebody see if you can get this without me having to tell you. Twelve months, she was in preparation, getting beauty treatments before she could go in to see the king. <laughs> uh, we got some slow people here today. Okay, let, let's read a little more. Oil of myrrh for six months, and sweet spices and perfume, and the things for the purifying of the women. Let me tell you something. I needed some sweet spices before God loosed me on the public. <laughs> I needed some sweet perfume. I needed about 12 years of beauty treatments, not 12 months. And I'm talking about I needed to have a beautiful soul. I had a gift. I could preach. I could have done this right after God called me as soon as I started learning something because when God gifts you, you can do it, but that doesn't mean that you're ready to do it. That doesn't mean you're prepared to do it. A lot of people have a gift that can take them somewhere and not enough character to keep them there once they get there. <laughs> so guess what? You know what's happening to a lot of you right now? You're having beauty treatments. Oh, this is so good. I can't hardly stand it. <laughs> You're having beauty treatments. I mean, God's working you over. <laughs> He's changing the way you talk. He's changing the way you think. He's changing the way you look at yourself. He's changing you from a complainer to a praiser. He's changing you from a fault finder to somebody who compliments and finds the good in everybody. Beauty treatments. We all need beauty treatments. I like this today. <laughs> Twelve months of beauty treatments. Jesus had silent years. John the Baptist had silent years. What do you mean silent years? Years when they had something in them. Jesus knew what he was going to do from the get-go. He knew why he'd been sent. Nobody else did. Nobody else understood him. We see him when he's eight days old, being dedicated. Don't hear one word about our beautiful Jesus until he's 12, when he's being dedicated in the temple. Well, what's that all about? Where was he all those years? All the Bible says was he grew. And then you don't see him again from the time he's 12 until he begins his public ministry so another 18 years goes by, and all the Bible says is he grew. John the Baptist had a call of God on his life from the get-go, and he was sent out to the desert to act like a wild man. And all the Bible says about him is he grew. And when he came out, he was a mighty, powerful man, shouting and yelling, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, can God count on you to give birth? Some of you, your baby's in the birth canal. <laughs> Don't forget, as uncomfortable as pregnancy is, the harder part is giving birth. <laughs> and all that doctor says is, push! 
Now, let me just talk to the women for a minute. If you've ever had a baby and a doctor scream push in your face when you already felt like everything in you was coming inside out, you, a woman can get violent <laughs> when she's like that. I will kill you if you ever get me pregnant again. I mean, women do some strange things, but oh, when you get the baby. Oh, let me tell you, when you get your baby, it is going to be so worth it. I mean, the baby just melts you, and then that very thing that you thought you would never do again in a million years, it's only a short period of time, and you think, honey, I'd like to have another baby. <laughs> and you know what? I can honestly say I think I've been having babies all my life, spiritual babies, one after another, after another, after another, after another. And each time you got to go through something, but boy, are those babies sweet. Can you bring it through to the finish? Somebody give God a big praise this morning. Well, you know, fulfilling a God-given dream isn't always easy, but it's worth the effort and the sacrifices that may be required of us. Don't give up. that the Word of God is true, and that He changes lives, and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer? Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, it's really great to have the ability to feed children all around the world. And I have a goal and a desire to keep feeding more and more all the time. This after-school feeding program serves an average of 90 to 100,000 hot meals per One year. One meal for these kids is, is survival. Well, I'm here in Thailand at one of our children's homes. You can feed, house, and educate a child. Hope Cambodia has been absolutely amazing. We've opened 15 different orphanages. and We're so grateful to be able to build this well here in Sri Lanka. We love to get clean drinking water to people. So the water they're drinking is not making their children sick, and it's, it's not dirty, contaminated water. Yeah definitely feel in Haiti just the absolute desperation. I'm at the Cure Hospital in Malawi, Africa. A huge line of people who are waiting to see our nurses and our doctors. Many doctors and medical people have volunteered their time. We are in Summers Point, New Jersey. Well, today we're, we're in Joplin, Missouri. We're here in Haiti in the village, and we're about to move people into brand new houses we've built. The winds were so constant with these big, big gusts. It was terrifying. 150 or more were killed. Thousands left homeless. How you doing there, guys? Uh, those gifts from Joyce Here in Zimbabwe, I was able to hand out the two millionth bag in a prison. That you can't have this life today. Don't know how many, you know, lives you guys save by coming in and showing the love that you guys show. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. 
Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.